Thank you for joining us in the Toyota Solutions studio. With me now is Lilia Aguilar. She's a former member of Mexican Congress. She's also the founder of Moving Mexico Forward and a researcher at Harvard on human rights. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. Uh, I am really happy to be in this summit and really happy to be with you right now. What are some of the challenges that women and girls face in Central America? I would say it's a, uh, it can look really simple, but it's not. Uh, we're facing not only uh, economic crisis or social crisis or security issues like violence, gangs, uh, organized crime, but there's also uh, an additional ingredient for women that we are facing silently that is uh, this asymmetric uh, difference between men and women in which these cultures, uh, cultures are made, these countries are made for men. We are living in a man world in which we are objects and we are objects that can be disposable. Mm. It's a tough environment to grow up in, I mean, especially for girls, right? It's, it's really tough because not only society thinks like that, but also women and girls really like that. So they think that these horrible things that are happening to them, either staying in Central America and Mexico, being facing violence in any, any level, like soft violence, like language being discriminated, being paid less, uh, being raped, being attacked, being sexual harassed, to the worst of the worst, that is femicide, that it's where you are killed because of gender issues. So. The problem that we are having is that the lack of education and this problem about culture and living in this world that belongs to men, even the language, uh, make us believe that we deserve it. It's like we have no rights. And when you think that you have no rights, then you embrace all this that is happening to you. So it's tough, but the toughest part is that we are facing uh, biggest battle that is that women need to realize in Central America and Mexico that we have rights and then we need to fight for them. You have helped establish new laws for youth, for women's equality, for government transparency in Mexico. Um, how did you decide to tackle those issues? You know, I have been an activist since I remember. Um, I was detained when I was 12 or 13 because mm. I was fighting for youth issues on the street and it becomes part of my life because my parents are activists as well and since I remember my mother used to tell me that you have a responsibility in front of society and I know it sounds really probably just tacky or something but um, I was raised like that my parents uh, were part of a a movement, a social movement uh, back in the 60s and the 70s and it was kind of faith. Yeah. So it sounds like then your life experiences have shaped your professional life then. Can you tell us a little bit more? Well, yes. Uh, my parents were activists and uh, I face uh, poverty. I was raised by my parents because they were uh, followed by police in Mexico. Uh -huh. Uh, so I was raised uh, by a woman who um, were raising 20 other kids, uh, sons and daughters of uh, like uh, students who were members of this movement against government in order to fight for human rights. And then that's where I learned how what poverty is. Uh, and if you're educated, you have a responsibility in front of society. And um, that we need to do something. I mean, you cannot just close your eyes and complain. That is not a solution. Complain is not the solution. You need to act. You need to go forward in front of it, especially if you have the privilege of being educated and then just fight for stuff. And it hasn't been easy, um, but I, I just cannot ab avoid it. What's your hope for the future of young girls and women in Central America? hard question. I think my hope is that we accomplish to understand that we have rights, that we are human beings, and it's not, I'm not expecting the system to change. That is not going to happen. 
I'm expecting that women understand that we have rights, me and myself, uh, I have experienced violence, I have experienced uh, discrimination, and you don't realize, you know? And if you don't realize, then you're not gonna move on as a human being, as a person. So I think that's my hope, that we can reach a point in which women understand that they're human, they're humans, they're people, and they have rights, and they need to fight for that and that we are we have equal uh, rights and options like men. As you go through your work and you um, are encountering situations where so many um, women and girls need help, wh where do you find inspiration like, to, to keep you know, positive, to stay um, strong, and keep doing the work that you're doing? Where do you draw your inspiration? I think, uh, first of all, my dad, uh, my mom, who's a warrior, you don't know that woman. Um, she kicked me out like several times out of my home because I was not doing enough. Uh, but my dad is a believer. He's 72 and he still believes that Mexico can change. And that it's like, I call him Peter Pan <laughs> because he is a Peter Pan. Like he's like a kid, 72 years old kid. But I think overall, I love people. I love watching people, I love being with people, so, and uh, my mother, the woman who raised me, um, I don't know, they are making their lives every day, and they're living their lives every day, and the strength that they have, and the love that they have for you, and for everyone who can give them a hand and help them, I think that is the engine that makes me happy and that makes me believe that at least I'm doing a small change. I mean, when I was a kid, um, I wanted to be an astronaut or uh, an actress or the president of Mexico. Because I thought, since we were really poor, I thought that was the way of changing the world. Astronaut is because I don't know. I thought probably being in the moon, I was like, I Sounded can send a spell and then <laughs> fix things. And being an actress, because soap operas are so important in Mexico, yes. they're shaping, you the know, women's character. And, and then the president is like, I can change Mexico just like in a snap. But it's not true. That is what I learned later. It's not true. It's, you need to go like step by step and I learned to pace and do it step by step. <laughs> Probably a more effective way of going about accomplishing yeah. change. Definitely, definitely. Lilia, thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you for having me and thanks for giving women this space and this voice. Absolutely.